Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Jensen. I am a Focus Nordic and Tamron ambassador. I've been a photographer since 36 years. I started very young. I've been awarded a couple of times in domestic and international competitions and published about 45 books with my father in photography. I'm here today to present Aurora Photography or Northern Lights Photography. What you need, how you set your camera and how you expose the picture. It's not that complicated actually. Aurora is energy and in space the sun emits energy. Particles, especially protons, are carried away by the solar wind through space and once it enters the stratosphere and the atmosphere of Mother Earth. It collides with oxygen atoms. The collision pushes away the oxygen atoms and the speed, the, the speed caused by the collision actually builds up energy in the oxygen atoms. And it has to emit that energy and it does it as, as light. And depending on which altitude they emit the light or the energy, we see different colors in Aurora. Green is the most common. Most people imagine Aurora as a green dancing thing on the sky. If you, as I do, shoot a lot of Aurora, you see Aurora in different colors. You see it in purple, you see it in blue, and the most uncommon color is perhaps red. It happens perhaps one out of thousand times you're out. It, it's a tricky thing to capture for, for the sensors today, but uh, the modern cameras, they can do it. They see that light. In front of me, you have some of the equipment needed. You need a sturdy tripod. In this case, the Zero XL tripod. It carries up to 35 kilos. This is a magnificent piece. Uh, you need, of course, the camera and a good wide angle lens. In front of me you have a few, few lenses and I will, I will come back to the lenses but the exposure times when it comes to shooting Aurora is the difficult part to focus and set the camera correctly. It's necessary to keep in mind the law of 450. In order to determine the maximum exposure time you take 450 divided with the width of the lens. So if you have a 20 millimeter lens, it's maximum 22 seconds. And I would say never go as, as far as 22 seconds. Try to be under 12 seconds, because the closer you, you come to this um, uh, equivalent, you will, you will have the, the, the stars moving. It, it's called star trails. Sometimes it's uh, creative and you want to have the star trails, but shooting Aurora, if you want to have the stars pinpoint sharp, so be under, divide 450 with the width of your lens and be, let's say, half of that. In front of me you see a, a lot of different lenses. This, the Tamron 1530 2.8 constant aperture is my all-time favorite, actually, for nature and um, aurora photography. With this lens I'm able to shoot uh, freehand uh, up to 1.3 seconds. I have one example of a, a red aurora I shoot freehand with, uh, with this lens. The 1530 2.8 is a fantastic lens. Super sharp in the middle. If you step down to a, about aperture 4 it's super sharp crossover. Another great lens is the Tamron uh, 2470. This is a fantastic lens. It's super sharp already at uh, 2.8 aperture and it's a constant 2.0 aperture. So the 2470 is a good choice. It's a sturdy, reliable lens. Also the 35 millimeter Tamron is a uh, is a fantastic lens. Very sharp in the middle already from 1.8 and super sharp uh, crossover and on aperture 4. If you need a budget choice the Sameyang 2.8 40 mm is a very good choice. What else do you need? Something very something not to forget is a extra battery 
I, all, I, I keep them warm, I put them somewhere close to my body in order to be warm. Because as you see, it's cold here. It's, uh, shooting Aurora is normally very cold. It's nighttime photography. So an extra battery is very useful. I also bring uh, a good headlamp because you're doing most of the settings in complete darkness. Also not to forget is something to clean, clean the, the surface of the lens because you don't want to come home and you have fingerprints all over the lens and it will actually destroy your exposure. Another great thing is to have a remote shutter. I, I always use a remote shutter. And why? Because moving the camera as, as this, it actually causes vibrations and you want to minimize the vibration. So once you pre press the, the, the remote shutter, you want to be as still as possible. Almost, I almost don't breathe during the exposure. On the Tamron lenses, you have uh, switches on the side, as you can see, for autofocus and manual focus. And you also have something called vibration control. Vibration control is uh, extremely useful if you shoot freehand. On this 15-30mm lens, I can actually shoot up to over a second freehand without problem. It's just super amazing. When it comes to installing uh, it on a tripod, you, and you want to shoot stars and have them pinpoint sharp you have to go to manual focus and you have to switch off the vibration control and why yes because the vibration control on tamron lenses it's so effective so it tries to keep the stars in the same position but since you're shooting on 10 about 10 seconds exposure time it will actually cause star trails because of the vibration control. So switch it off, put it in off, and also put the, the lens in manual focus. When it comes to the camera settings, uh, depending on which model of camera you have, they are almost the same. You want to set the camera into a manual mode or as much <laughs> manual as possible. To start with, you go to your menu and in my case, I always shoot raw and do post-processing. So you set the, the, the camera to roll and the, inside the menu you can find something called long exposure noise reduction. You switch that off. There's something called high ISO noise reduction. Switch that off as well. Because you want to have it as much as possible in manual. When it comes to sharpness, you need to do the, the, um, the focus manually. So let's have a look, depending on which model you are using, how you do that. You put the camera in manual mode because you want to have um, the possibility to, to set the ISO, the aperture, the exposure time and everything manually. But how do you do when you set the focus? So when it comes to setting the focus of the camera, you have an infinity symbol on the lens. You might think that the stars are on an infinity level, but actually infinity normal on the lenses, it's beyond the stars. So uh, when it comes to setting the sharpness or the focus on, on in the camera, it's very important to, to know that the infinity is normally way beyond the stars. Depending on which model of camera you have, you can go to, you can magnify what you see in the display as much as possible. And then you go back and forth on, on, the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the lens like this. And since you are in magnification, you will, you will actually see when it gets sharp. So back and forth, back and forth, and there, there we have maximum sharpness. After that, you zoom out and you're ready to shoot the picture. And this is a bit trial and error to get the correct exposure. Um, I would say if you're shooting Aurora, start somewhere around uh, 1600 ISO, put the camera in aperture somewhere 3.5, something like that.
and when you shoot the stars they will go uh, they will be like a needle if they are sharp and once they are out of focus they are blurry so when you go back and forth looking at the stars you will see this in, in magnification in your camera some cameras have, have um, focus peaking but do not trust the focus peaking that much because it's uh, not that easy to see if you're using focus peaking if it's red green or if it's yellow because the stars they should be as needle points so um, use the magnifier look closely and go back and forth manually on the lens to see where you have the accurate focus once you have it you're ready to shoot a picture.